1983 Ware Avenue. Did you have a moment to talk? Uh, are Hello? you an investor? I am an investor. What's your name, sir? I'm not interested. What's up guys, my name is Richard Taylor and you are watching Hold My Hand Wholesale. Today we are going to go over a call that I had with a seller and this time it didn't go so well. I'm showing you this video to show you what it's like when a seller doesn't exactly act the way we want them to. You know, some people have had conversations with wholesalers and investors that have not gone favorably. Maybe they have had their time wasted in the past, maybe they've even been scammed before. So guys, it's important that we tone match sellers and give them the exact same attitude that they give us. So you're gonna see it in this video and hopefully you understand that I tone match the seller and that I don't always talk like this. This is just sort of the way that I had to talk to the seller to convey my point. Hello. Hey there, I'm calling about 1783 Ware Avenue. Did you have a moment to talk? Are you an investor? I am an investor. What's your name, sir? I'm not interested. It's listed on Zillow, correct? That is correct, but I'm not interested. So we have not even started talking about what we are going to offer this guy. I mean, come on guys, you have your property listed on Zillow, investors are gonna call you. That's just the name of the game. So from the bat, you know, I'm thinking this call is gonna end in 30 seconds, but we actually managed to keep him on the phone for 12 minutes. I am not gonna make you a cash offer and I'm not gonna offer you financing. I can guarantee you that what I'm about to tell you is something that you have never heard before. Would you give me a chance to try to explain? We can hang out and um, I say something. Okay, in two minutes or less. You know, he's interested. He's just not a nice guy. You got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes, I am an investor. And I do fix and flip in the area. I'm calling because I believe I can add value to your property and sell your property for more than you have it listed. So what that means is that if I come in with my fix and flip crew and my capital, I can update the interior of your property. It's already updated. It's very nice. I saw the photos, but we could update it even further to increase the value of it and then give you more than 425. Okay, guys, so what I just said is a novation agreement. This is a little bit of a complex strategy, but it's one of my favorite types of agreements to pitch. In essence, a novation agreement is when you come into somebody's property, update the property with your own money, with your own crew, with your own materials, and then you sell the property as a group. With a novation agreement, which is something that almost nobody knows about, you can come in, update their property without buying it, and then split the proceeds. I don't mean down the middle, but split the proceeds such that you profit at least 50 to $100,000 on it. One of the biggest hurdles in doing a fix and flip is acquiring the property to flip, but with a novation agreement, you just partner with the current owner and then split the proceeds. So I saw that you're asking 425. If we were able to give you 450,000, what would you say? I say that sounds too good to be true. Usually things that sound true. to be to be true are not true. True, a hundred percent. I totally agree with you. And and maybe it is too good to be true. This is gonna be your opportunity look, look, to determine listen, whether I'm or not. I'm seventy three years young. I've I've heard it all. I'm seventy three years young. I've heard it all. I was born before the internet. I was born when electricity was kind of new. I've heard it all. Uh, no, Mr. Seller, you have not heard it all. Time to get your head out of your- I, I really, uh, I don't want you to waste your time on my time. Watch how he pivots to, hmm, well maybe that might be a good idea if I learn a little bit more about your company. I, I don't get it. Well, I mean, the house has been completely renovated. Everything is new. So guys, the situation here is that some dude decided to flip his own property and in the way that some people lack a sense of fashion, some people lack a sense of interior design. So this guy did a 2022 flip with the brown granite countertops, brown wood, and ugly white tiles. So yes, all your stuff is new, but it's a big bundle and mixture of ugly styles that don't fit together. It both wasn't that expensive and was really ugly and mixed in styles from 2005, 2010, and some things from 2022, and then a ton of different styles from around the US. You can't do that and there was no way for me to tell him, hey bro, your property's ugly as all hell. I couldn't say that. So what could you do except put furniture in it to increase the value of the house? Furniture. I'll tell you right now. So first of all, cabinet handles. Second of all, 
we can change the countertop. I noticed that you had this sort of brown, tan-colored, speckled countertop. That's more of a 2012 style. Nowadays, our buyers are looking for a white subway those tile back. Brand new, those are brand new countertops. That we're right. So let's say your property is, let's say it's worth 400 right now. If I come in with $25,000 of rehab, I believe I can make your property worth and who's going to pay for the $25,000 you invest in? Me. Notice how he just interrupts constantly. This guy has no interest in rapport or relationships. Not only do I have to build a good relationship with him, but he has to give me a good vibe because I'm bringing in my capital. So this is more of a, a job interview from my perspective than his. So he feels as though, well, you may not be right for the job. No, bro, you may not be right for the job. You know, I owe you that money when you sell nope. the house. And nope. We could do that. We could do this any way you want. I'm very flexible. But essentially, my plan is well, to what's bring you to. Well, I don't get it. But you're gonna make the, the house. Uh, I, you're gonna enable me How to do get I more money, money for the. How do I, I make it for you? Right. How do I make money? So say I come to your property. I bring in twenty five thousand and my rehab crews. You are looking to get. 425 for the property, but after we put that 25,000 into it, it doesn't just make the property worth 25,000 more. We can make it worth all the way up to 500,000, 550,000. Now I give you your 425 that you're having a hard time getting right now because it's been on the market for 121 days, and I'm still able to make a profit. So instead of buying your house, I make your house beautiful, give you more than the number that you're asking, and then I keep the rest. So the house becomes. Yeah, how long does it take you to do that? we could have that done in say 30 days. Sometimes when people are born before the internet, they have distorted views of reality. So I know a lot of my viewers are between the age of 20 and 30. If you told your parents about wholesaling real estate, what would they say? That's a scam. You're gonna get caught holding the bag. That's illegal. You need a license for that. Sorry guys, but they were born before the internet. These guys, they're just sort of living in their own reality and that's the way it is. So we have to do our best job to try to get them to come around. I, I'll be honest with you. I could have my crew together two weeks from today. They could be there with all of the materials. They could have the work done in three weeks. Your property would be worth 550 in the next month and a half. We sell it, give you over 425, they give you 435. My company keeps the rest. My total investment is 465,000. How long have you been in business? I've been in business for three years. Three years. We've done 15 you have any references? Years. Yes, or I do. I can, yep, yep. I could provide you 15 sellers who we've flipped in the past year. You, you talk fast. I like that, but uh, I'm. Did you guys hear that? He says, You talk fast. I like that. Tone matching. Still not convinced. You're going to have to. I, convince I would me. hope you're not convinced because we've just no. been on the phone for five minutes. Not at all. You got no idea yeah. whether or not I'm trying to scam you or, or what. Yeah. Not. You got to do your due diligence. So, my strategy when somebody pushed back, I agree with them. I say, you know what? You're probably right. I probably am a scammer. And I wouldn't want you to think that I'm not a scammer within five minutes because it takes longer to prove myself to you. It makes me a little bit angry when I hear this guy on the phone saying, well, I think you probably are trying to con me because I just told you, bro, we've been in business for three years and I can give you references to confirm that we're actually who we say we are. I want you to use your full discretion on figuring out whether or not I'm a scam. You can look up my LLC and see that it's been active for three years. You can look up the 15 people whose houses I've purchased and you can have conversations with them and say, hey, okay. is Richard Taylor a good guy? Did he do right by you? And I would okay, go, okay. Uh, listen, listen, I, uh, all right, let's uh, go to where the nitty gritty is, uh, where the dirt hits the road or whatever the road, the road, the tire hits the road, whatever you want to say. Um, yes, sir. Send me the proposal that you want to make. Uh, send me your references. I will call every one of them. Perfect. And uh, I will find out if they are prefab. I encourage you to look at public record and see if my company ever took title on it. Because all of this yeah. information is readily available. I will I'm look at your all of that. So let me send you an email address. Is this your cell phone? This is the company line. Would you like my cell phone number? Instead of arguing, I kind of like to do little in your faces. So when he says, is this your cell phone? I say, uh, oh no, this is the company line. Would you like my cell phone number? You just want to sort of uh, a little pompous 
attitude towards this guy. And and I got one more thing to tell you that you're gonna like to hear. No, I don't want to hear. Oh, oh, no more, no more, yeah. And I'm gonna come back to you with numbers. I'm gonna tell you what I think your house could be worth, how much we need to get it there. Not right now. I'm not gonna hear all that right now. I'm, I'm, I'm just taking down your cell phone number to send you my email address and uh, have you send me all of that via email uh, on a document that I can look at with your proposal and your references, okay? Is that okay with you? Yes, sir, absolutely. I'm glad that you think that way because it would be a red flag if you didn't want to verify us. So let's go from there. Um, I'll, I'll be interested to get that and uh, I will look at that. We'll talk soon. All right. Okay, Richard, thank you, bye-bye. Wow. Anyways, guys, I hope that made you feel good about any sort of interactions you have had with difficult sellers. This was one of the most difficult sellers who seemed to have no understanding of human communication or emotion or building relationships while on the phone with a stranger for 12 minutes. He was extremely difficult throughout the duration of our call, insulting, demeaning, all of the above. I am fairly certain that he is still Anyways, guys, I hope that you enjoyed the content. My name is Richard Taylor. This is Hold My Hand Wholesale. Please hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed it. If not, click a, a big thumbs down because, you know, maybe you really hated the video. Have a good one, guys.